We're talking gear list. We're going meat hunting. We've got a brand new tent. We've got a brand new rifle. 10 days solo in Fiordland, under 15 kilo. So what's in my pack? I thought instead of sitting at home and doing the normal thing and spreading them out and going through it, why not hit the hills and do a meat hunt while I talk about it? It doesn't really matter if it's three days, 10 days, or even 30 days. The only thing that's gonna increase and decrease is the food. I've also done a what tent am I taking to Fiordland? This is an extension of that gear list. Now I know I picked a winner, the MSR Access 2, but there's a new contender. Rab New Zealand have sent me a Rab Latok Summit, something I have never come across before. So quick and easy to put up. This is another contender. That contender spot is opened up again, and this could actually be the one coming with me to Fiordland. Also, the new gear I can't wait to try out is a brand new CZ Ergo. I tell you what, that is a piece of gorgeous engineering. The tops of where we're going is just spectacular. We'll be looking for little pockets just where the deer are gonna be tucked away. And if we can't get them this afternoon, there's a good chance we'll get them in the morning. <laughs> I hope. So in this pre-raw video, instead of going over every single item, bit by bit, I don't want to waste time, so I have done a big list of all the items and the weight, and of course the name, to help you out. So here it is, and freeze frame it, and I hope it helps you out. Oh, don't know if you noticed, sorting out the audio issues, things are looking good. <laughs> now here it is, my internal pack weight. The golden rule is here, if I want to bring more food, I've got to sacrifice items on this list. Now I'll be touching on key components throughout the whole entirety of this video and how I choose those items. Come check out this epic tree, it's unreal, it is so cool. The animals are obviously onto it because they've been in here, <laughs> check it out up here. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Just the structure, the twisting, all the stories that's in the trunk of this tree. Anyway, I've had my fun. Let's get the pack back on and get up that hill. The tops are just here. We're about to break open. Check this out. This is exactly what we're looking for. Check out those open tops. I want to make sure I set up camp well away from there because we don't want the scent boosting down there, advertising that we're here. Nicely tucked away from the wind, plenty of feed. That's a hot spot. Oh, this looks like us. How's this spot? Nice and flat. Oh, clearings are just down there. This is so perfect. We can glass right from here. Set up camp here. Oh, this could not have been more perfect. This is definitely the spot. Oh, always nice to get that pack off. All right, let's get this tent out and get it set up. I am so excited about this tent. What a spot to look at it. Now this is what I can't wait to show you. <laughs> There's only two poles, you can't go wrong. And it is just so simple. You can put those separately in your pack and then it just goes down to nothing. It's a two person, to be fair, it's gonna be a squeeze with two people. But I'm here by myself, more than big enough. Let's get it set up. Here we go. As simple as grabbing it and rolling it out. We've got our tent, we've got our two poles, and it's as simple as finding the preformed pocket either end and then just letting that tent pole find the other pocket. And then we go in with the other pole, crisscrossing them, instead of a 45 degree angle. And again, 
straight into that preformed pocket. And that's it, job done. It's just so simple, so easy, so effective. But what we do have in here is these Velcro strips here. And what that helps do is just, it helps realign these tent poles where they need to be. The beautiful thing of this is if that weather is just horrible, this is a setup you can do with the door closed. Once you've pegged out those main corners and the guide ropes, just jump in here with your gear, with your pack, and get set up out of that weather. With these guide ropes, this is definitely what just pulls that tent, those walls away from where you're sleeping. It just gives you that bit more room inside. But it doesn't stop there. It's got more features that's gonna blow your mind. I know it did mine. It's got these tie-in points, these anchor points. There's one here, another one here, another one on the other side. So all you do is you thread your rope through here, comes out the other side, anchor into the earth, set up, fall asleep, even with your harness on, carabiner into that rope that you've anchored and secured into the crazy rock or whatever crazy terrain you've put yourself in. This is a contender. This is a massive contender. This is real low, so this is insane for crazy weather. You do lose a little bit on the head, that's for sure, when you're sitting up because it's so low to the ground. They do have another one which gives you more headroom and you can buy a separate vestibule that you can attach. I don't know if you noticed, you probably did, but there is no vestibule with this one. But what I'm thinking is I can just erect quickly a small tarp and just utilize that for my cooking if it rains. But I think we're clear skies, we're good to go. So now touching on the gear, what I first do is I select the right footwear to suit my foot. Now if my foot is not happy, you're not happy. That's for sure, no matter what gear you're going to take with you. Equally as important as selecting the right sock. Then moving from there is the outer shell. The outer shell is key for me. And the Karunga Rab Jacket works for me a treat. It's got pit zips so I can unzip, dump away that moisture before it turns to cold on my body. And equally as important, easily zip up when that storm comes in. I can close everything down. Also just as important as the rad pants that I've got. Now these pants are incredible because they've got a full zip along the leg. So you don't have to take your boots off or your gaiters. So quick and easy to get them on, which is what I'm looking for in a pant. And also it's a two-way zip, so I can zip it at the hip, zip it down. Same as the jacket, dump out that extra moisture if I need to. From there, for me, it's all about the sleeping bag. Whatever top grade sleeping bag your budget will allow you. No matter how cold, wet, exhausted you are, you've got to make sure that you're jumping in that tent or that shelter with warm camp clothes and a good dry sleeping bag. Recharge your batteries and you're good to go in the morning. From there, I'm always looking for my mid layers and my first layers, which is generally a merino synthetic mix. A good tip here is what I always do is I take them home once I've purchased them, I dump them in ice cold water. I wring them out after they've been soaking for a while and I put them on my skin. If they're easy to get on, that's a good sign. And if they dry quick, that's what I'm looking for. Those two ticks. Another key, key, key ingredient I really want to touch on is keeping these warm. Your hands, same as your foot. If your hands aren't happy, you're not going to be happy. It's going to destroy your day or your trip. I've gone through so many gloves. Finally found some gloves that keep my hands dry and warm. I've taken these into negative 20 degrees. No problem. <laughs> and then from there, I just build my gear, whether it's to do with durability or how light or how well something works. 
Now that gear list is just what works really well for me in the environment that I take them in. But it's all down to the maintenance of that gear when you bring it home. You've got to make sure you maintain it, you've checked and inspected it, you've cleaned it correctly, especially if it's Gore-Tex breathable fabrics, so it's not clogging in from the inside. It needs to get out and breathe. If you don't clean that gear, it's going to clog up, and then it's going to send that moisture back when it needs to go this way. It's early evening. We've got about maybe another hour left of light. It's definitely cooling off quite a bit. <laughs> Let's head up and over and check out those other open tops just around the corner here. I've got a feeling that they might be on this sunny face just catching the last of that sun. Look at that. Completely in sun. Out of the wind. This is perfect. We'll tuck them behind this bush here, get the binos out, and just work those faces. Got about 20 minutes of light left or so. So surprised I haven't seen anything yet. They just must be waiting for that last, last dying light. The shooting light is pretty much just about gone. Another five minutes down in here. It'll be long gone. Wow. Look at that sunset. <laughs> Look how reflective those guidelines are. <laughs> That's so cool. No tripping over those in the middle of the night. Oh well, I'm going to tuck in there and I'll see you guys in the morning. Where hopefully, hopefully we secure some meat and we'll carry on with the gear list. I'll see you in the morning. Morning. Man, it was cold last night. I'm glad I had that warm sleeping bag. So the plan today is... Just gonna duck over here and just glass this area. Hopefully something comes out. I've just seen a young one completely by itself. Normally I would leave the young ones alone, but this one looks like it's just mooching around. I've been watching it for a little bit. So it's been kicked out of its family group and uh, I think it's a taker. I'm just gonna set up now. I can't bluff around too long because it's feeding into the bush, so I don't have time. We've got some shots of it, but I don't think I've got enough time to set up on it for the impact shot. So I'm just gonna get ready, set up, and let fly and see what happens. We're only looking at 300 yards here. So, two point two MOA. That was perfect. That was perfect. <laughs> Don't know if you heard, but that was a real whack. That's always a good sign. I'm pretty sure it's down. I didn't see it go down, but I heard that whack, and that's good enough for me. Let's not celebrate it too early, but that whack, that big whack, that it's really hitting something, that's a good sign. Take some of these warm clothes off. And then let's head down and check it out. So this is exactly where it was. That white log's back there. Bigger tree, smaller tree. It's got to be here somewhere. It's got to be. Oh, with the flattened grass. We're in. Taking that life of an animal. It's always uh, 
it's always quite a sad moment. But as long as it's done respectfully, I take absolutely everything possible and respect it when I'm cooking it. So thanks again to Mother Nature providing the goods for me and my family. It's very young, very tasty, and I'm quite happy with the weight as well. A bit lighter than the bigger ones, the predecessors that I normally shoot in here. Now I'll save you from the butchery. I'm going to get it butchered up in the pack. I'll talk to you again back up on the shelter. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Definitely a bit hot. Dipping down, going back up, finding the animal. That flattened grass definitely helped. <laughs> and then boosting back up. It was sunny as when we were coming up. Again, it's clagged in, but that's all right. That keeps it a bit cooler when we're carrying the meat out. I don't know why I keep saying we when it's actually me. You're not helping me carry the meat, but um, you're there in spirits. <laughs> and I'll take it. So now it's about food selection and what I take and why. Now in my time, I have eaten a lot of dehydrated foods and some of it is a bit hard to stomach for me. Don't get me wrong, there are some incredible flavors out there that I still enjoy. I did go on one trip. It was a 14 day excursion in the bush. And on my second day, I threaded the gas on wrong and absolutely destroyed my cooker. That was on me. But then from there, it was 12 days of just nothing but soggy, dehydrated, cold, hard to digest, dehydrate. What I do now, I normally take a few pre-cooked meals like these O meals, but these have a heated pad in them. So they're self-heating, they're self-cooking, and they're just divine. Even though some say that they're quite heavy, this one is 227 grams so if i ever have one cooker that fails on me or I overuse that gas i know i've got hot food for the rest of the duration and then i'll mix it up with a bit of dehydrate rice or mashed potato and some of those dehydrate desserts they're pretty hard to beat so that's what i do for food and my why and here we have the food already pre-cooked you can actually put this straight into a jet ball and boil up that water and that will heat it as well. Even comes with cutlery, salt and pepper. And this, this is the magic, the heating pad. That's it. You pop that in there, you fill it with water. There's actually a level mark here. And with the food. And you close it up. There's actually, when it heats up, there's a steam valve here to set aside for about 10, 15 minutes. Oh, it's so nice and warm in there. This is delicious. Man, they really nail the brown sugar in this one. So there you go. That's how I plan my food. Not only on how light it is, but how convenient it is, especially towards the tail end of that trip, where, like I said, I could run out of gas or something could go wrong. And the real benefit of this solution is it's very safe to cook inside the tent. There's no naked flame. Well, there we go. Tents all packed up, took all of two minutes. It's unbelievable. The Contender, the Latok Rad Summit versus the MSR Access 2. Which one is coming with me to Fiordland on 10 days? It's going to have to be the Rab. It's just so quick and easy to put up, disassemble, get in the bag. It's unbelievable. Look, I know it's a single wall tent. I expect condensation, but there was way less than I expected. I'm going to combat that with a bivy bag and also just a small towel just to wipe down those walls. Wow, what a trip. I hope this gear list has been helpful for you. It is just what works for me. It might work for you. I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.